serious talk time, guys. I want to talk to you about some signature spell choices you maybe shouldn't choose before game starts if you don't want to automatically be the arch enemy. You know, let's get into it and I think you'll see what I mean. So, you know, we're going to start off on the screen because I just want to kind of talk about uh, a post somebody put up on Twitter a few days ago, and I think it really kind of illuminates the point. So, on the 16th, uh, Draco Lucian said, MTG question for you all. What is a card you enjoy playing that will turn you into the arch enemy? This one never fails me, and he put in pure into the abyss, which is a great card for four and three black. Target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library and lose half their life you round up each time. This to me, I think the reason this gets a lot of hate is it is pretty much a game ending or combo piece card and I've seen people do some fun stuff with it. My response was for a signature spell in the command zone, an Oathbreaker, if you put an obvious combo piece uh, that lets people know you're working to win the game, a board wipe or planeswalker destruction in your command zone, people are going to zero in on you because of a couple reasons. Let's tear them down one by one. So, the reason combo pieces are an issue, say you're running the Ralzeric, that's going to do one damage every time you copy uh, or cast an instant or sorcery, and you run a copy spell in your command zone, and everybody knows it's very easy to just, once you get two, you know, copy spells on the stack, you can just infinitely copy each, and then just win the game from there in an infinite combo. Or like... Liliana and the new spell that goes with her that will infinitely combo to drain all your opponents out of the game, the uh, Professor Onyx. Let me see if I can find it real quick. But there is uh, Professor Onyx and another card that is also an infinite combo. People can look in your command zone and see that you have the Jace, the wins when you have no cards in your deck, and a card that's going to remove all the lands from your deck and the rest of your deck is lands. They're going to zero in on you. <laughs> because <laughs> they can see what your win condition is. They know they have to stop you. You've given away too much information about what your deck is trying to do, and you've already told them you are a threat before the game has even started. That will zero people in on you. Um, the next one, board wipes. If you are playing against people who love tribal decks or whose commander very much care about tokens or creature synergies, like Sarkon really loves dragons or Arlen Cord really loves werewolves, if you've got board wipes in your command zone and you've obviously built around them like you're playing a planeswalker deck or a vehicle deck, players are going to look at that and they're going to be like, oh, I can't win the game if I don't deal with you first. You're going to draw unwanted or unnecessary hatred in that game before you have a chance to set up and do what you've planned. Um, these strategies can work. But you do have to understand that in using these strategies, you are kind of setting yourself up to fail. And finally, this probably doesn't seem like much, but there are some players that build so heavily around their Planeswalker or a particular ability their Planeswalker has, and that is the sole focus of their deck, that if they don't have that Planeswalker out, their deck is offline. A good example of this is the War of the Spark Watley. It makes all the creatures deal damage equal to their defense. Sometimes people put a lot of zero power creatures in their defense and creatures just with big butts. And then if you keep their Planeswalker off the battlefield the entire game, they're never going to get to a point where they stabilize to win. Other examples are, like I said earlier, the Jace from War of the Spark that says you win the game. So there's some Planeswalker commanders that if a player can't get them out and keep them out or can't get them out so that they can get access to their signature spell because it's an important combo piece... They're going to zero in on you because they can't win as long as you're in the game from their point of view. I know that sounds crazy, but it's an important concept to think about when you're choosing your signature spell. I would say um, think about that carefully because you don't want to set yourself up to fail. And sometimes giving people a false impression of what you want to do is going to be a better choice. That's why some people who want to play very, very powerful commander decks will hide their commander in the main deck as a secret commander and run something innocuous in the command zone so that they don't have to deal with that problem. 
Now that's just a suggestion you can take with a grain of salt. Let me know what other signature spells you guys find particularly dangerous in the comments below in Commander. If you made it this far into the video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you subscribe, you get to join this scroll below of all of my awesome people who are subscribed to me on YouTube. Uh, we recently did a deck giveaway. We're at 300 subscribers. I built, and I'm gonna have that deck list and video out in a couple days, a personal deck for someone that I'm going to do a uh, video on. If you guys are interested in that, subscribing to the channel, make sure you don't miss the video. Up here, oop, up here are my uh, patrons. Uh, if you wanna join this scroll, I'm sure you know how Patreon works at this point, and then I will also put up a uh, another video up here on this side. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and thank you for stopping by. I know it was kind of a rant, but I do appreciate your time. Have a good one.